The College of Charleston, among many other academic institutions, have decided to make optional the SAT requirement for the 2021 applicants due to COVID. Well, it makes you wonder, are these standardized test scores necessary? Here to help share why he's not a fan, like myself, is Bob Schaefer, Interim Executive Director for Fair Test, National Center for Fair and Open Testing. What do test scores have to prove? What do SA test, SAT test scores have to prove? Well, the SAT is a good measure of how well you take the SAT. A bunch of fast-paced, multiple-choice questions where you have to guess strategically and move very rapidly. Um, if test-taking was what success in college or life was, the SAT would be a fair and relevant test. But it's not. In college, you have to analyze problems, write essays, to participate in classroom discussions, etc. And none of that is measured by the SAT or any other standardized test. Here, here, you know, and I'm, I'm not afraid to, to speak my own personal opinion on it because I myself am not a great test taker, uh, but a lot of people have other characteristics that make them a valuable and a, a, a wonderful addition to the student body of any particular university. Now, I want you to take us through the history of standardized testing as we know them today, the SAT and the ACT. So maybe you can also tell us the difference between the two. Well, the SAT, as, as we know it, was invented in the late, in the mid 1920s, uh, almost 100 years ago, uh, by people who wanted a measure to prove that uh, white Europeans were smarter, and males, were smarter than everybody else. Um, it grew directly out of the, what was called the eugenicist movement, which had a strong faith based uh, commitment to the notion that people from Northern Europe were the, the best intellectually. People from Southern Europe were somewhat inferior. Jews, Blacks, Hispanics, and women didn't even count. Um, and that was, that was baked into the test in some ways by the person who invented it, Carl Brigham, um, who was a, an active member of this eugenics society. He repudiated that garbage on his desk, but his test continued moving forward. Uh, and it's been overhauled, oh, half a dozen times in the last 30 years, each time to try and make it a better product to sell in the marketplace and more competitive, but never to make it a more accurate predictor of how well someone's going to do in college, which is the sole scientific claim for the test. In fact, high school grades with all their differences and flaws are a better predictor of undergraduate success than the SAT or its competitor, the ACT, which was created in the mid 1950s because people were frustrated with the SAT. That's really interesting. I did not know that the ACT was a competitor to the SAT. The SAT always claimed to measure what its initial name claimed, scholastic aptitude or an some sort of underlying ability, whereas the ACT claimed that it was explicitly linked to high school curriculum, to the subjects that you took in your high school courses. In fact, they're not really all that different and, over, different, and over the years they have converged, but their historic roots are very different. One, the SAT and sort of the IQ intelligence movement, and the other in the uh, achievement uh, movement of measuring mastery of high school subjects. How have then these tests become so prevalent among basically all colleges and universities across the country? Why has that become the benchmark to decide whether someone gets admitted or not? Great question. Um, the testing companies spent lots of money marketing their tests. These are products and they sell them like any other advertiser. Uh, the book, The Big Test uh, by Nick Lehman at Columbia Journalism School shows how the people who make the SAT, it's a, a nonprofit called the College Board, um, worked very hard to get first the California university system and then the rest of the big colleges across the country to adopt the test and make it a requirement. Uh, but what's happened in the last decade in particular is this, the pendulum has swung in the other direction. Even before the COVID pandemic, more than a thousand colleges and universities were test optional. They had decided that the test was not necessary to do high quality college admissions. And that included half of the, the top 100 liberal arts colleges, national universities like 
Wake Forest in, in North Carolina, George Washington, Brandeis, the University of Chicago, which is recognized as one of the most selective universities in the world. They were all test optional pre-COVID and their experience was great. Yeah. When colleges yeah. go, they go test optional, they get more applicants, they get better applicants academically and they get more diversity. I have to uh, wonder if I was one of those uh, pre-decision uh, guinea pigs as far as that goes, because my SATs were terrible. But anyways, uh, we need to take a break. When we come back, I want to talk about who really is benefiting by these test scores, what the money involved is that, that you're talking about, the marketing aspect of it. And to come back, circle back to our original question, can you opt out? So we're going to talk about that after this. Don't go anywhere. Welcome back. We've been chatting with Bob Schaefer, Interim Executive Director for Fair Test, National Center for Fair and Open Testing, and we've been discussing the possible abolishment of the SAT score when you apply for college. So, uh, Bob, first of all, I told you I, I divulged a little bit of personal information. I'm a terrible test taker. My SAT scores were not great, but I still got into the college of my choice because I had some other extracurricular activities to my credit that made me maybe a little bit more of an interesting student. So lucky for me, I was able to get in, but a lot of students don't even get that opportunity. So, so who exactly are these test scores benefiting? Well, the test scores benefit kids from privileged families who have the resources to prep for the test, whose parents have been able to provide them with all kinds of extracurricular and other opportunities by homes and communities with, with good schools that have lots of college prep courses. I mean, people have said that SAT really stands for social affluence test. There's a very strong relationship between average test scores and your family income. And that's not what the test is supposed to be measuring. It's supposed to be measuring your capacity to do college level work. And it does a quite weak job of that. So what is the cost that goes into it? Not even the marketing side for the actual test, but for the student themselves? Well, the, the, the costs are huge. People here, the college board, the maker of the SAT is a nonprofit, and they think, you know, tiny little thing. It's a billion dollar a year corporation. The president of the college board, which makes the SAT, earned $1.7 million last year. It is a rich, you know, fat corporation. And it, it's a really weird situation in which the revenues flow to the college board all the, the costs are incurred by test takers and their families and high school personnel who administer the test for very minimum wages. Um, so kids pay for the test. Colleges used to say they want it. They, they don't now. Two thirds of the colleges in the country are test optional for 2021 admissions. And it's growing every day, including yeah. University of South Carolina. It's, it's a very great business design if you want to make a lot of money and put the burden on kids for costs, both financial and emotional. Okay, let's circle back to my original question. If it's okay to consider students based on their other merits, such as GPA, extracurricular activities, et cetera, during COVID, why shouldn't this just become the standard? Well, that's, that's exactly what Fair Test argues for. And more than two thirds of the colleges on our 1600 college list are test optional permanently. And we expect to see many schools that have experimented with test optional admissions during the pandemic stick with that policy going down the road. It works, it produces better student bodies, produces more diversity, and it's fairer to all kids. Now, final question for you, can you opt out? So now we passed the 2021 semester, moving forward, if the SATs have not been deemed, you know, if, if they've been, if they're still in use, can you opt out? Well, it depends on the individual school's policy, but at least half of all colleges in the country will be SAT, ACT optional for fall 2022 and beyond. So people should go to the, the list, there's a free list on fairtest.org, our website, it's updated every week, uh, that includes those schools and apply there where you'll know you'll be viewed as more than a score. That's wonderful. Bob, I'm going to end it here. Thank you so much. For anyone who wants Thanks, more Lee. information, go to Fair Test, National Center for Fair and Open Testing. Really appreciate your insight. Thank you. We're back after this.